Right, so without doubt for me, when it comes to being messaged on Facebook and things like that, the most common question without a doubt that I get is in relation to shopping patterns. So we thought we'd do a quick video today on, uh, I want to keep it seasonal. So we're going to go down very much winter commercial shopping patterns, although a lot of them are, are applicable to the summer as well. But what I want to run through is pretty much what you're looking at, which what makes you decide what sort of shopping pattern's correct. You know what I mean, it's different ways of feeding with different baits that they're what you need to concentrate on to decide whether, you know I mean, how you need to shot your float pretty much. And I'm going to go through a few little tips um, to make sure we're doing it right. I mean, for me, it's a, a big thing that catches a few more fish. So, as I say, first thing, and this is probably one of the, the key things that I teach on my coaching days, is that what I find very, very important, you may have heard me say it before, is fishing the correct ways with the correct baits. I mean, what it ultimately comes down to with fishing is that there's only two ways of feeding. You either loose feed or you pot in a tight pile. That's pretty much what it comes down to when it comes to pole fishing. And in winter, so it's morning, really, really important to get those things right. I mean, get your rig working in the right way to catch fish in the right way. So airing first on, on putting the trap in. I mean, any time I'm going to put a trap in, keep things very, very tight, very, very accurately, that's the all the times that you want your heavy shotting patterns. Your nice, your spread bulks, maybe even a bulk and dropper. I'm going to touch more, a bit more in depth than both in a minute. When I want to keep everything as stable as possible, using wire floats, all them little things that help make my presentation a little bit better when fishing in that way. Um, on the flip side to that, you've also got your loose feeding. That whenever you're going to loose feed, and very, very much so in the winter, what you tend to find is in a similar way to your loose feeding where you, your fall of your bait is very, very, very important because you're going to catch a high percentage of your fish um, as they're intercepting your bait. Also in the winter, visibility comes into it a lot more in the... Um, Differently to when, when you're loose feeding and the fish are feeding within your bait, they're quite easy to catch because they're, they're intercepting all your bait as it goes down. It can also work to your advantage in the winter to have a slow falling bait just to give them more opportunity to, to see it and to get that bite. It's almost like nearly like dobbing. I mean, so often we're, we're going to actually do a maggot video touching on this in depth a little bit more, but um, fishing with very, very slow falling rigs, even when fishing on the bottom in deeper water, it just gives the fish the maximum amount of time to, to sort of see that bait and think, oh, go on, I'll have a little go of that because it looks nice, I might as well have a go. So, you, so your rigs need to be shotted and uh, accordingly to, to try and get your bait to work in that way. So running down each one, I mean, I want to break one, each one into a bit of detail so we can have a look. So firstly, as I said, it, it's me setting me pile, me micro pellets, when I'm feeding very, very minimal amounts of heavy baits to keep them on the bottom. It's a type of shotting you have for that. And that's always... Um, heavy shotted in the bottom um, bottom third, bottom quarter of your float. I mean, a lot of heavy shot down the bottom, which uh, increases sensitivity and increases accuracy in my rig. Yeah, if I'm putting a tiny pile on the bottom there that may be six inch, six inch square, the last thing I want to do is try and get a, a real light, slow falling rig to land on top of it, because it's going to be hard. And then if I do manage to land on top of it when I put my rig in, it's going to be even harder to keep it in place because I've not got the, the weight and the stability in my rig to keep it where I want it. So by using a heavy shot in, so generally for me, you've heard me talking about creating my curve all the time, which I'm, I'm a big fan of when pellet fishing, a strung out bulk does that sort of thing. You know what I mean? A strung out bulk of whatever, normally 10s, 9s or 8s, depending on the size of my float, probably an inch to two inches apart, all depending on the depth. So I like having my, my shot, um, set in a way so it's proportional to each rig. So if I've got a six foot rig, it's still in the bottom third of my rig. A four foot rig, bottom third of my rig. So it might be condensed a little bit if the depth's a bit less. I'll always have my shot a little bit tighter. So you need the shots for the, the right sort of thing. In conjunction with that, you're going to have your wire stem floats. I mean, for when it comes to winter fishing now, every little bit of help you can sort of get to keep that rig absolutely perfect over that ultimately tiny pile that you could potentially be creating it helps. I mean, a wire just beds in a little bit better, keeps it nice and stable, keeps me right where I want to be fishing. So there's less chance of it moving all over my peg and keeps me on top of that pile. So the, the benefit that having a wire and this sort of shotting allows, again, something that I, I really do like showing in my teaching days, is that by having such a positive shotting down the bottom end, anything that comes into that peg, because my trap's perfectly set right over my pile, if anything comes in and I get a bite off it, great. I see a bite nice and positive. But if anything comes in and slightly disturbs my shot, because you're using such heavy shot that keeps it right where you want it, you see little indications. 
I mean, unless you know that there's fish feeding in your peg even before you get a bite, which is a massive, massive edge for me. And also as, as a spin from that, so going a little bit, not off topic, but in depth a bit more, is to um, increase that even more in the winter, you definitely need to pay a little bit more attention to your bristles. I mean, looking at bristles is something I've been guilty of brushing over for a long, long time, not focusing exactly on the, the perfect bristles for the situation. So in the winter, it really, really does make a difference being able to read those tiny little bites, those little indications that let you know that there's fish there and you need to alter accordingly to catch them. So your bristles tell you so much. And by using different variants of bristles, I'll actually show you them because they're so much easier to go through. Um, let's have a look, say, so my wire stem, because that's what I'm, I'm talking about at the minute. You've got options of either your 1.5 mil hollow bristles, 1.5, uh, 1.2 mil hollow bristles, or even going solid bristles. Yeah, in that case, that's a solid glass bristle for ultimate sensitivity. So the thinner, um, as a rule, the thinner you go with a, a hollow bristle, of course, the more sensitive it's going to be. But then moving across to your solid bristles, they have far, far less buoyancy in the bristles that lead to a much more sensitive float that if the conditions allow, like today when it's absolutely perfect, I can use a really, really sensitive float and I can see a lot more. Obviously, if you've got a bit of wind, you need a bit more buoyancy just so your float's not going to sink. We'll say touching on the, the type of bristles of your float, it's a massive, massive advantage to me is being able to read the indications rather than the bites that tell me whether there's actually fish present in my, in my peg in the first place. So with those things um, all added together, I mean, that creates a really, really sensitive, stable rig that's perfect for my, my soft pellets. So that's with my, my stability rig sort of covered at any time I'm going to put that accurate trap in. So I feel that that's right for whenever I'm feeding minimal bait and it's going to be rock hard, but I want to keep the fish on the bottom. So if the fish are going to feed in a different way, which say this time of year, once it gets cold now, at any sort of maggot dominated venue for me, partridge flakes popped into my head as soon as we're, we're talking about this. Baits where maggots are much more as you catch more fish on them during the winter for whatever reason, uh, where the fish are more likely to feed by sight. So that's where you've got to feed things in a, uh, fish things in a very different way, depending on how the fish are feeding. I mean, I'm going to touch on two different rigs for sort of, for fishing maggots, but it's, it's right for any bait that you're going to loose feed. Anytime you're going to feed casters, even pellets to an extent, if you're going to loose feed a few baits and get baits falling through the water, then you need your rig to present them baits in that way that the fish could potentially be eating them. I mean, at any time you introduce a loose feed uh, into the water by catapult, by hand, however, it gives the fish a massive amount of time to intercept them baits. I mean, we've done a lot of underwater stuff in the past and the, the time it takes for baits such as small pellets, such as maggots, to sink in I mean, three to five, three to six foot, which are the depths that we're often targeting in the winter, it's ridiculous. It's months that they take to at the bottom. So what I need to do from that point is make sure that my rigs present my bait in the same way or as close as possible to the way that those baits are falling, especially what you find early on in the sessions when fish are very, very reluctant to feed, when they're not actually going down onto your, your amount of bait that you are feeding. If, if they're, they're feeding probably 80% by sight, that's when we slow falling rigs are so important to catch that five, 10, 15 fish in the early part of the session before they have a little go. And say again, there's a few little things that are, are really, really important. That just make sure my, my bait sinks in the in the most natural way possible when I'm fishing in that way. So here I've got set up. Let me ping him off there. One of my really, really light, delicate, slow falling rigs. And in today's case, this is say we're, we're going to go on to do a maggot video, and that's exactly how I'd fish maggots in this way. Is with a very, very um, lightly shotted sort of thing. It's a very light float for the depth. I mean, I've got no problems in, the, in decent ish weather if it's not too windy using floats of 412s, 410s, even when I'm fishing in sort of five and six foot. I mean, because what it's all about is having that lovely slow fall in the bottom three foot when my bait looks as natural as possible. So often my shotting in this is very, very light and sparse at the bottom end. Like in that case, I've just got two number 12s in the bottom two foot. And then with this being a 410s, I've just got number 11 spread through the rest of the entire rig and it's another four or five. One, two, three, four, five number 11s, two number 12s right down the bottom end, which I mean, when I'm laying that rig in in a line, it sinks really, really slowly. And that five foot, it's probably taking about 15 seconds to, to sink, which is not quite the same as a loose fed maggot. It's impossible to achieve that, but it's not far behind. I mean, it looks, it's the most natural I can create my rig to look 
with having a maggot with a big lump of metal and a few, <laughs> few little lumps of lead around it. It's the best I can get it to look. But by lowing, laying rigs in like this constantly, it, it's a great way of agitating fish into having a go and to catching that percentage of fish that you probably wouldn't catch if you were fishing heavy rigs, your stability rigs with too much shot down the bottom. You, you just bypass all them fish and never catch any fish. I want to say by accident, but by design, if you've got this style of rig. So same again with this one, I'm much more likely um, to use my carbon stems. So anytime I'm fishing through the water, we've said this many, many times in the past, using a carbon stem float allows you to lay your rig on the water and it follows your rig all the way through. So you stay in direct contact, direct contact with your hook bait as it descends through the water, which shows me then bites up, like say what the rig is designed to do to catch fish as it's going through. Yeah, if I have a, a wire stem, then that's vertical. Me, me, lines at a right angle you don't see bites with a wire stem through the water anywhere nearly as good as you do with a carbon stem and just as I do with my um with my stability rigs with my wire stem fishing I want to make sure I've got the right bristle for this as well and I actually use three different bristles for this I either use a, a 1.5 mil um hollow bristle a 1.5 mil solid bristle or a 1.2 mil solid bristle if it's really 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 delicate let me give you a little pose of them all depending on how hard it is you know I mean to to look at from a distance they're all exactly the same but those little subtle changes in material at your of your bristles and diameter of them so it does make a difference to seeing those little indications that i mean it, for me it's not a there's no game changing move by swapping to that it means i catch fish whereas the other one it doesn't it's not about things like that it's little subtle proper changes in your rig like using the right sort of bristle that puts two more fish in the next bloke or three more fish in the bloke over there that's fishing a bit too positive it's the tiny little things like that that put you one or two fish ahead which you know, come the way in it makes all the difference just by having everything as perfect it can for the situation rather than just thinking there's a proper lad there just thinking let's bodge it and that'll do so yeah with floats always covered i'm going to choose most of the time i'm going to choose the most sensitive float that i can do for using the situation depending on wind just so I can see what's going on a little bit better. And so with this rig, laying it in is all of the importance. It's putting that rig in all the time, either with or without loose feed, depending on the day. That's what you've got to sort of match it to. I'd say making that as natural as possible so they find my, find my bait so it's looking good as it goes through the water. Just touching on it quickly with that one, I find that with me falling through the water rigs, me, me light gaily rigs, whatever you want to call them, choosing the right hook's important as well and I always go down the lightest hook option I possibly can. Yeah, I often like a decent size of hook, normally a 16, just so I've got something to put a double maggot or it, it could take a bit of bait, you know what I mean, if I need to. But I want as light as possible wire. You know what I mean, in that case, that's a, an MXC5 in a 16, which is about as light as I go when it goes to wire gauges. But again, just so it's not got that additional weight that some pellet hooks might drag your bait down a little bit faster. So that whole rig's geared towards keeping things as light and as delicate as possible so that it looks nice. So lastly, so the, the two rigs I've covered, they're me, the basics of the two ways of feeding, either putting your pile in or loose feeding. You know what I mean? They pretty much cover both. The only other rig I find a need for in the winter is it tends to be in, in the, the winter months, maggots for me come, they're probably the most popular bait at most venues. And very much at commercial fisheries, maggots on the short line is a massive, massive way of boosting your weight and often the best line for, for most of us at the end of the day. There, I feel I need a little bit of a different way of shotting. Yeah, often you might need your really delicate shotting if there's very few fish feeding on the rock bottom days when you're after one or two fish. But by fishing too delicate over your maggots, even though you're loose feeding them and I'm sort of contradict things a bit, um, if I was fishing too delicately with my rig over the top of my maggots, I waste a lot of time because my rig's sinking a little bit too slow. I'm missing out on them fish that are feeding on the bottom. So in that situation, it's about the only time in commercial fishing for me where I actually fish with a solid bulk and droppers. Yeah, other than fishing in the edge, it, it doesn't really have a place in my fishing. But for maggot short at this time of year, so it, it's the way. And indeed for a lot of my silverfish fishing as well, fishing with a bulk with two droppers and pretty much any float you can use on that. It'd be up to you, a carbon or a wire, neither's, neither's right, neither's wrong in that sort of situation. Just same again, choose them the right bristles for the situation so you can see it. But a shotting pattern like this just allows me to get down as fast as possible, pretty much. There's not a lot of finesse in it. It's about getting it down as quick as possible and I'll either have one dropper or two. I might move that dropper up if they're, if they're looking at it a little bit on the way down. But say always having the option of a, a really positive rig over loose feed in the right situation. So it's a little, 
a little bit of an edge, a little positive way that can catch that one or two fish more than if I were fishing really delicate rigs and it wasn't quite right for the situation. But yeah, as a basic, so the, the only rig missing here is a, is a dobbin rig, which we'll, we're gonna do a separate video on that on another time. But for all your winter fishing, by covering pretty much those three different forms of, of shotting pattern, paying a little bit of attention to your floats. So it's the little things that make the little differences and put a couple more fish than the next bloke in your keep net.